Let's talk first about what's life like now as Continental Motors. Well, it's, it's very good. Uh, Continental Motors had a great life under Teledyne. Um, we're having a great life under Avic International Holding Company. Uh, they are very much focused on investing in our company, and they're very much focused on us learning uh, the opportunities in China and some of the other emerging economies out there. We have added to our engineering staff, uh, which uh, our company, pro our, our parent promised uh, Mobile that they would do when they, when they acquired us, and they've carried through on that. Um, we've increased our production staff as well because the market, at least until very recently, was up. So it's been very good so far. Has the public perception of foreign ownership changed anything for you? Uh, you're actually the first person that's asked me about our new owners this entire week. So uh, I don't think anybody views uh, us any differently. Uh, we continue to focus on what's been our bread and butter for the last couple of years, which is driving to improve and provide exceptional customer service. Let's face it, the quote unquote Asian market is huge. Uh, international markets have been huge all along, but to have the best of what you've done so far uh, teamed up with obviously a major presence in the Asian market has to, well, I'll, I'll bet there are times when you're sitting back at the desk going, <laughs> Well, that's absolutely true. I, I actually just returned from China, spent two weeks there. Um, our new owners were extraordinarily uh, kind in arranging a lot of visits. Um, I visited a number of uh, what eventually will become small GA airports, uh, visited a number of places that will be turned into GA airports. The excitement there is just palpable, um, and the opportunities there are just extraordinary. Um, I think they are doing it the right way. Uh, the CAAC is being uh, appropriately cautious to ensure they uh, provide public safety. Um, I think the companies are recognizing that this is not an inexpensive venture or business to get in. At the same time, I think they recognize that it's a business that they have to have. Um, you know, freight movement, uh, passenger movement between small uh, villages, and, and I use the term villages because I was in small cities in China and they were still a million plus population. Um, so unlike here in the United States. But I think they're doing it the right way and it is a great opportunity. And yes, I chuckle to myself all of the time at the advantages of my new ownership. The DFC-90 all-digital attitude-based autopilot delivers significant performance and safety improvements over previous generation systems. Its innovative flight envelope protection guards against autopilot-induced stalls, and the straight and level mode provides one-button recovery from unusual attitudes for an added measure of safety. Immensely popular within the Cirrus community, the DFC-90 is now being made available for a growing list of aircraft including Piper Matrix and Mirage, Cessna 182s, and Beach Bonanzas and Barons. Fly with confidence. Fly with DFC-90. One of the things that you and I have talked about in the past has been the diesel market. We've been waiting for, I mean, there are questions about fuels, but there's also questions about alternative power plant technologies. And diesel has so much to recommend it to aviation that we've just kind of been sitting back and kind of waiting for the right motor. We're excited about our motor, the TD300, and the product series that we're developing around it. You know, it became very apparent in China, but it's also apparent in South America and Africa and the Pacific Rim in general that Jet A diesel has got to be the choice. Not necessarily because an unleaded version of Avgas or Mogas wouldn't be viable, but it's still difficult to even get those, whereas any airport you visit has Jet A on it. So that's the number one focus. We're having great success with our TD300. We've increased critical altitude substantially recently. We've improved power performance. We've improved starting and flight operating characteristics. So we're very excited. We've also moved into certification with the FAA. So we're exactly where we want to be. We have a number of OEMs excited about the product and about the product iterations that we're doing in both lower and higher horsepower. But diesel is going to be where we make our bread and butter in the future, and we are investing full bore in that. Um, at the same time, I don't want our customer base to think we're forgetting about our bread and butter engines for the last hundred years, which are all gasoline based. We continue to work and support alternative fuels to meet the perceived lead crisis. And I only say that because I think it's perceived by the environmentalists versus uh, us in the industry. Um, we continue to support that and have a number of options. We're supporting SWIFT, we're supporting GAMI, we're supporting the FAA. 
Um, we're also looking at uh, options around MOGAS. Uh, we're looking at the issues related to ethanol. Uh, we're, we're actually happy to talk to a number of airframers about their experience in dealing with this. So we think we're going to continue to support that for many, many, many years in the future as well. Well, on the subject of piston, let's start, let's start it from uh, ground up and work our way up. O200 has uh, seen new life as an LSA cornerstone power plant. Uh, it's, uh, it's almost an iconic power plant at this point. How is LSA tuning up for you at this point? And more important, what are you learning from the community? Well, uh, that engine, is, is, as you said, received new life in the O200. We did a lot of innovative things for Cessna for the Skycatcher that are paying huge dividends. That engine in a low compression and high compression provides a lot of options for the LSA market for kit builders and others if they're interested in the experimental. Uh, and it's low compression version. It's fully suitable for use with uh, low octane fuels that run the gamut. It's a relatively economical engine to buy and it's a very economical engine to run. How's the mid-range line doing right now in the 200 horse range? Well, I'm, I'm going to throw some kudos out to my competition as much as that hurts me. But, uh, you know, when you're in that 150 to 185, uh, 200 range, um, they've got a great product. It's, it's a product I wish I had. We really are focusing in the uh, 200 plus horsepower range right now, both in our older gasoline line and with the diesel. We're having great success with our FADEC product. OEMs are jumping on board that product because, let's be frank, it offers fuel economy, not because a pilot can't lean the plane better than our electronic system, but because through the entire flight profile, the average pilot can't keep up with that process. And in that situation, that engine does great. It's a bulletproof engine. I fly behind it almost every day, and uh, I just love it. So we're going to continue to focus on our big bore core competency, 250 to 350 electronic ignition. How will FADEC be deployed? Well, you know, it's tough. Many people have, uh, even at this show, have come and asked me, well, are you SD saying it in this, are you SD saying it in that? And, you know, as a company, I'd love to do that, but that's not really our business. There are great companies out there that do STC work, and they do it exceptionally well. So, you know, I invite anybody that wants to do that. We will work with you in viable opportunities. And, and by that, I mean, I don't want to go STC, the one-off airplane that was built you know, in a quantity of two and has went out of production. But we will work and help people there. But where we really focus is on the OEMs. And we have several OEMs that are adopting uh, the, the FADEC technology, and we'll be announcing that um, in the foreseeable future. I'm not going to announce it because that's the OEM's uh, bailiwick. But we're very excited about that. That product works wonders, uh, in my opinion, as a pilot who flies it every day and a new pilot that flies it every day. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year, only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. How's the K engine deployment gone with the Cirrus? Fantastic. That K engine to me is bulletproof. I am in the process. As a matter of fact, I'm mad at my team because we're STCing that engine so that we can offer it as a full retrofit. So when you hit TBO, we have an option for you that we are STCing that drops in the factory turbo, the 22T style turbo in your aircraft. I am upset right now because I want to fly it and they're finishing the FAA certification work on it. It's a dream to fly. I mean, I, I love the FADEC and, and this one's not yet FADEC. That'll be what we do next to it. But it is just an absolute dream to fly. That 2500 RPM, it's quieter at takeoff, it's got oomph down the runway and then when you get up it just screams. And the customers, all of the feedback we've heard on it so far has been just phenomenally positive and I'm happy they're happy. So where do you go from here? I mean, we've, ta we've talked about the things that we know. What don't we know about where Continental is headed at this point? 
Well, number one, our customer service uh, and delivery is still not where it needs to be. And I say that every year. If, if you go back and look at our reels, I answer this question roughly the same way, and that's because we have to be in continuous improvement. I do believe that uh, my team has, has uh, succeeded exceptionally well in, in improving that, but we still have a long way to go, and I want our customer base to know that we are going to continue to work on that and improve it. Technologically, where are we going? I think FADEC. I think alternative fuels and absolutely diesel. Do you see a time when technologies like FADEC and diesel will be the order of the day rather than the exception? And if so, about when might we see that? I think that uh, that will absolutely be the case um, as the, the fleet slowly transitions over. Um, I think from an OEM basis that probably before the turn of this decade, if not sooner. Um, and again, we have to realize North America is a very good but very mature market. When you look at China, you look at India, you look at Africa, um, you look at South America, these places need airplanes. Um, that's driving OEMs to want diesel. It's driving OEMs to want alternative fuels. So in order for them to succeed, we have to give them that technology because all of them, Cessna, Hawker, Piper, Cirrus, uh, Diamond, uh, American Legend, the Cub Crafter series, all use Continental engines, and if I missed anybody, I'm sorry, but they have excellent aircraft products. We have to give them that next generation engine that makes them succeed internationally.